Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another session of Deep Racer Basics. Something These are topics I think everyone in Student League should understand. I think the Pro League get this already, but again, I see a lot of questions from students asking about uh, the reward function, asking about help with the continuous action space or having trouble. This is really critical to understand. The continuous action space is a continuous value, right? When it's training, it's picking numbers the, um, uniformly distributed across the entire action space. So why do I bring this up? Because a lot of students are looking at the examples, the AWS examples. The first one here that I have is follow the center line in time trials, right? This is probably an example reward function people look at. And what does this say? Well, let's take a look. It says, calculate three markers that are increasingly further away from the center line. All right, so why does this matter? Well, because most people starting out in Deep Racer are looking at the follow the center line in time trial example from AWS, right? And what does this do? It basically figures out how far away from the center line the car is and gives a reward based on that distance, right? So distance from center, I mean, that, this is already, uh, it can't be more than half the track width, right? If you're on the left-hand side, you can't be more than half the track width away. If you're more than half the track width away, you're off the track, right? So these markers are based off, off of that, right? So you have 0 0.1, 0 0.25, 1 0.5. So 0 0.5 here basically means you're at the very edge of the track. Just keep that in mind. So here are the rewards. If you're within the first marker, you get a reward of 1. Within the second marker, 0 0.5. And if you're just be, just about to get off the track, you get 0 0.1. And if you're beyond that, you get practically 0 because you likely crash or you're close off, close to off track, right? Now, let's use my favorite tool and visualize this. Okay, let's flip over to GeoGebra. And I've typed in the function here using the if command. If x is less than a, then give 1. x less than b, 0. 0.5. If x is less than c, 0. 0.1. Otherwise, 0. 0.001. 0. Basically the same thing we had in the code itself. And you can see that GeoGebra basically um, rewrote this in a very nice way. Very easy to read. And this is what it looks like. Right? This is the graph. So if the distance from track is anywhere between 0 0.1, you're getting this value, right? And the next step is 0 0.5 and then to 0 0.1. All right, so keep in mind, anything in this stage is going to get the same value. Now, to me, this does not it's not the ideal, right? Because what if you're 0.3% or 0.3 away from the, the uh, center line? Shouldn't you... Wouldn't you want to have a higher reward than if you were at 0.5, right? I feel like I'm. this is nice, but not really maximizing the continuous, uh, the continuous domain, the input space, right, that we have, right? Distance from center line is a continuous variable, and we're not really maximizing this. What if we formulated this as a continuous variable instead? Uh, excuse me, continuous function instead. So let's think of it as this way, negative 2x plus 1, right? When I'm at the center line, I, or right in the middle of the track, I get the maximum value of 1, and then it starts tapering off, right? This is a smooth line. There's no, there's no steps. So that means that every single value between 0 and 0.5 has a mon is monotonically decreasing, right? So if I'm at 0.3, that's better than if I'm at 0.5, right? You don't get that from the discrete reward function that's in the example. So I'm going to, I'm going to suggest that this trains faster because it's continuous. It's easier to differentiate. It's easier for the algorithm to understand that 0.3 is better than 0.5, right? 0.1 is better than 0.2. So Again, why did I bring this up? There are other examples that talk about the angle, the steering angle, or the speed in a discrete manner in these example reward uh, functions, right? It's really important for us 
to think about them in continuous terms. I do believe that it trains faster and yields better results. So let me know what you think in the comments. Again, use QAlgebra to, to visualize the reward function, think about what's happening. And I really push you guys to think about continuous reward functions as opposed to discrete ones. All right, good luck out there. Talk to you next time. There you have it, folks. Team Boltron. Stay tuned for more. Make sure to subscribe and click that like button if you want to see more of this content.